Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, welcome, brothers and sisters of uh, District Council 57. This is uh, informal information. We have Central Data Services as well as Newport, and we are going to discuss our fringe benefit packages, what is our health care annuity fund. So anybody who has any questions, they can comment in the live chat box. Uh, we will have a Spanish version afterwards for anybody who does not speak English. And uh, with no We'll talk about the new structure as well, but uh, we're going to get moving with Tracy from Newport. We're going to let her take over for the annuity portion. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tracy Ottman, and I work at Newport. And what I'm here to talk to you about today is your annuity plan and how you can manage through it. One second, please. Yeah, just give me one second here. So we're back in. So, so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the plan details. We're going to talk about your investment options within the plan. And then finally, we're going to show you how to access your account through the Newport website. So first and foremost, you probably wonder who Newport is. We are your record keeper for the plan. And what that simply means to you is we hold the website for you and we do the record keeping for the union. So that's really all you need to know. At the very end of this presentation, we're going to show you how to access the website um, so you can review your account and make some changes to your plan if you would like to. So plan information. We're going to talk about the annuity and savings plan. What's really nice about this plan is the money comes in from the union, so you don't have to do anything, which is very unique to your plan. The one thing you have to worry about is just how to invest your money within the plan. So we're going to show you your investment options within the plan, and then we're going to show you on the website how you can make changes to your plan too. So let's cover the investment options within your plan. So experts would say you need to diversify your investment options within your plan. So you have a separate asset allocations that you can choose from in the plan. And what we encourage you to do is not put all of your eggs in one basket. So what's nice about your plan is you have two separate strategies you can take advantage of. You have a hands-on strategy, which means that you can make the selections and you can decide within the funds within your plan how to invest your money. And then you also have a hands-off plan as well, too. And those will be the strategic allocation funds within your plan. And those are based upon risk. So we're going to dive into both of those options moving forward. So first, we're going to talk about the hands-on method. So um, this is where you're going to do a little bit of research, or you can actually hire a professional. You can get advice from people. There's no right or wrong how you do that. But when you are selecting that asset allocation, it's really all your choice. So 
So why asset allocation? All of our assets um, in the plan, whether it's a stock, a bond, or a cash plan, they all perform differently. So you want to have an asset allocation that's based upon your age and your risk tolerance. So we're all just wired a little bit differently for that. So um, you have the option to use our website. And on our website, we have all of the uh, fund fact sheets for all of the funds within your plan. So you can do your own research if you'd like. You're able to see the performance of them if you would like. Um, and then uh, you also can um, rebalance your plan whenever you would like. So these are the funds within your plan. You can see on the hands-on approach, you have all of the funds from the most conservative plan, which will be your T row price stable value, all the way down to an international fund will be the most aggressive. So really ideally what you're looking for when you're a newer member is traditionally you're a little bit more aggressive and then as you get to um, retirement, you're charged with making your plan a little bit more conservative over time. So you can do that all yourself or you have the hands-off approach as well too. So we're gonna show you what the asset allocation funds are as well. So your asset allocation funds, those are gonna eliminate the guesswork for you. They're gonna be a specific portfolio that you can sign up for and the asset allocation will be based upon risk. So you have three different asset allocation funds within your plan. You have a conservative one and it has 45% um, in stocks, 45% in bonds and 10% in cash. And then you have a moderate fund where it would be 63% in stocks, 31% in bonds, and 6% in cash. And then you have the aggressive fund, which is a little bit more aggressive, and it has 78% in stocks, 20% in bonds, and 2% in cash. So really what you're looking to do is, um, and this is traditionally, you usually are in an aggressive portfolio when you're younger and in the plan, and then you are charged with making those changes over time. So you'll want to, you know, move your um, plans over time from aggressive to moderate over time. You do have to manually make those switches yourself. You can either call our call center or you can do it right through the website. I do want to remind you, if you've never made any investment selections, you're automatically put into the conservative portfolio. So if you feel like you need to be more aggressive, make sure you make an adjustment to your asset allocation. So now let's talk about the Newport website. So we do have a guide for you. So um, if you have any need to have help with the signing onto the website, simply call the fund office. They can get you the guide over to you. But I will show you how to sign onto the website. First and foremost, you want to go to newportgroup.com. And then you're going to be looking for the blue logon button on the top right hand corner. And you're going to want to select participant access. And if you've never signed on to our website in the past, your user ID will be your social security number without dashes, and your password will be your month, date, and an eight digit PIN, which will be month, month, day, date, and a four digit year. Once you enter that information into the system, you are required to create your own username and password at that time. So once you do that, you get to our dashboard. The nice thing about our website and our dashboard, you're going to be always be able to see your balance and how it's performing. Um, any type of transactions that happen on your account for the last 30 days is going to show up in the transaction tile. Uh, there is a message tile, so we always have the option to put messages out there, whether it comes from Newport or whether it comes from the union itself. And then if you ever want to pull a statement up for yourself, you have a statement tile right on your um, website as well, too. So our website is very easy to navigate. At the very top, we have a shortcuts tab. Any type of transaction that you would like to make through the website is right through the shortcuts tab. So if you are looking to change your investment strategy, remember we said that over time you're, you're charged with doing that. You're going to want to change your investment strategy over time. You're going to select manage investments and go to explore my options. And then you have the automatic investing and um, my own investment choices come up. If you're looking for to change your investment strategy, you're going to select my own investments. And then you can select exchange, rebalance, or future elect elections. 
So that's how you make a change. You can always call our 800 number if you need any help with those type of transactions. So on our website, as I told you earlier, you can do research on the funds that we have within our plan. Under the fourth tab under plans, you can go to investments and all of the funds for the union will be listed under the investment plan. The really nice feature for you is they are listed in risk order. So you're gonna see your most conservative fund to your most aggressive fund. If you want more information, you can go to the I in the circle at the end and you're gonna get more information on that. So what you'll see when you select the I is you can pull up the fund fact sheet. It's gonna give you all the specific de details on that mutual fund. So when you're looking at a fund fact sheet, you're gonna see investment objectives and strategies, fees and expenses right here. This is where you're gonna see all of the performance and how it's performed for the last 10 years if you're interested. My favorite section is this section right here because it shows you what is in the mutual fund, the top holdings in the mutual fund, and what type of sectors that they're invested in, in that, in that mutual fund. So if you're interested in that, these are all on the website for you. And then just so you know, we have a Newport mobile app that you can add to your phone as well too. It's really nice because you can use your username and password that you established through the website, works your mobile app as well too. So you have to go to the website first, set up your username and password, then add the mobile app, and the same username and password is going to use it. What you will see on our mobile app, it does mirror the website. So you're going to see the My Forecast section, you're going to see transactions, your balances, so they look very similar. We do have some exciting news coming by the end of this year. We're looking to see transactions being able to perform through the mobile app as well. And we do have a financial wellness center if you're ever looking for any other financial um, information. It's on our website as well, too. The one thing we always like to remind you in accounts like these, you are responsible for updating your beneficiaries. You will do that through the fund office, but I never take a, a, an opportunity not to remind you to do that. Any major life events, if you got married or divorced, any type of birth or death with um, any type of beneficiaries, please make sure that you make someone aware of that because we always want to make sure that your assets are left to whom you would want them to go to. And just remember that Newport is here for you. So I encourage you to write this number down or put it in your phone just if you ever have any questions about your plan. Um, our website is newportgroup.com. Our participant service number is 844-749-9981. And I'll just take a minute so you can add that to your phone. You go back one. So just as a takeaway, I just want to remind you to you sign on to the website. We always encourage you to set up your username and password. Make sure that you understand how your money is invested and that you're in charge of that over time. Um, I appreciate your time. And best of luck. Do we have any questions on the on that Thank, thank you, Tracy. Uh, we understand there's a little bit, and we're working through a couple of difficulties here with the screen being flipped. Uh, we're working on that, but uh, give us one minute, and then we're going to have Jeff from Central Data Services up next. I, 
twice show up? Absolutely. Okay. We good? You you're good. Alrighty. Hello everyone. My name is Jeff Lockery. Um we're with the administration for the fund at CDS. Um, we're going to quickly go through the orientation. Um, the first page is the open enrollment form. These are sent out every year, um, generally in the middle to the end of October. Um, enrollment period is in November. And this will be where you choose your plan, whether you want to be on a high plan, a low plan, and also whether it's high mark or whether it's through UPMC. And I will wait till we turn the page. Um, so yes, at the top of the page, you can see your choices are high mark PPO blue, high plan or high mark PPO blue, low plan, same with UPMC, a high plan and a low plan. Um, the other option is to opt out of the coverage. Um, and I'll go into some details on, on opting out. If you choose to opt out, you need to have coverage for your spouse as well as any other children. And, you as the member would need to be on their coverage. Um, if, we, if we go to the next page, there's some detail between the difference between the high and the low plans. Um, the high plan, it's going to have the least cost to you out of pocket. Your deductibles will be lower and your out of pocket costs will be lower for the high plan. The low plan, you're going to pay a higher dollar amount for your deductibles and your copay, or I'm sorry, not copays, but your out of pocket is going to be higher. The difference is the cost to you that comes out of your health care account for that coverage. Um, and we will go over that um, on further pages. Your medical coverage levels are based upon your family makeup. So it's either member only, member spouse, member with child or children and or member family. Uh, you will default to one of those coverage levels um, automatically and you'll have different splits of your welfare contributions coming in. Um, so this just details what's going to dictate which plan you go into. Um, your personal accounts, um, at the middle of the page, you'll see these are your splits. So your welfare money that's contributed in, if you're member only, you'll have 50% that goes to your health care side and 50% that will go to your WRA account. Um, and I'll detail what each of those accounts are and what they do with, um, further on. Member spouse is 80% to health care and 20% to wage. Member child is 80% to healthcare, 20% to wage, member family, 90% to healthcare, and 10% to your wage account. If you were to opt out, as I explained, um, you would have 20% to your healthcare because you're not purchasing any health insurance coverage through the plan, and 80% will go to your wage account. Um, to start, if you were new and haven't had contributions, you have to, first thousand dollars will go to your healthcare account, and then those splits that I just explained will go into place. Um, the monthly fees, and these are the 20, um, 2022 fees are, are listed at the top of this page. So if you're a member family high plan, it's $1,403 per month. A member family low plan is $1,218 a month. So the difference between it's a, it's, Cheaper for the low plan, as I explained before, but you're going to have higher deductibles. Um, but your monthly charge will be lower. And member child, member spouse, and member only, those amounts are listed there as well. So your health care account does two things. It's those fees that come out for your monthly eligibility, but you also can use that for medical reimbursements. And medical reimbursements would be medical expenses that you are having to pay out of pocket after your insurance has covered the charges. So deductible amounts, your co-payment amounts, um, it can be used for dental services, vision expenses, and this can be for yourself as well as any of your eligible dependents. The wage account is, and that's the other portion of your splits, 
The wage account basically allows for you to receive paid time off throughout the year. Um, one day is equivalent to a check for $200 that you would receive. The taxes are above that. Um, generally, in order to get one day, you need around $325. That will vary based upon what location you live in, your locality taxes, some are higher in certain areas, but basically around 325 will get you a net check paid for $200. Um, you're permitted to take up to 75 days per year, and that is only contingent upon you having enough money in your account to cover that. Um, the next page is assuming you are eligible for benefits, you also have a week, weekly accident and sickness benefit, as well as a accidental death and dismemberment insurance. Um, the accident and sickness is $325 for 13 weeks. The life insurance, as well as the accidental death and dismemberment, are $15,000 each as well. Um, to apply for those, you would just need to call the fund office, request the forms. We would send them to you. Um, and we have examples of those further on. And if we can go two pages, this is an example of what the enrollment form is. You'll receive this form each year in your enrollment packet, and this is where you will choose which plan you want. Currently, it's, as I said, the high mark in the UPMC and the high and the low. Um, if you are choosing to opt out because you are covered under your spouse's coverage and your dependents are, you would then choose the opt out option and sign on here. To choose the opt-out, you also need to fill out the next page, which is the waiver of participation and proof of other coverage. This is basically where you're going to list that other information name of the other insurance, and then you're just going to sign off certifying that you are covered there. The next page is going to be an example of your medical reimbursement form. This is where you would you need to save your receipts for medical reimbursements, attach them to this form, and you would fill out the synopsis of the breakdown of the doctor's name, date of service, and the amount. Um, as it is now, we reimburse these once a month. We send checks out on the 15th of the month. We need to receive your request by the 10th. Um, we're in the process of actually setting up for a debit card for your medical reimbursement. So those will be going out in the future, which will allow you to just swipe your card, which will then subtract those monies from your healthcare account. Most of those you will not need to provide a receipt, but some services you will. The next page is an example of the pay time off. And as I said, it's $200 per day. Um, that's a net payment to the member. Um, and the same thing with this, we need to receive your request by the 10th of the month and we send checks out on the 15th of the month. Um, for the opt-out coverage, um, you would not be eligible under this plan. You would be under, oh, I'm sorry, the accident and sickness and the life insurance. If you choose to opt out of the plan, those coverages are not provided. You need to be eligible under the plan to have those covered. Um, so yes, this form, the personal time off form, like I said, you can request these each month throughout the year if you have enough money. Otherwise, at the end of the year, we will close your account out and pay you as much as we as we can for whatever your balance is. Uh, currently, we're paying those in the month of November. That way, everyone's sure to have them for the month of December. Um, when you complete um, a pay time off form, you also need to fill out a W-4. This is an example of that. It, much like you would fill out your W-4 with an employer, you just need to fill out the top and sign the bottom and, and then any of the uh, dependent information, you would complete it on here. We're not able to reimburse a pay time off request without the W-4. So it's we also send these in the enrollment package each, each year. So if you just fill them out at the beginning of the year, then you'll be set for the whole year. Um, the next page is an example of your beneficiary card. This is, would be for your welfare plan. So the sick and disability, or I'm sorry, not the sick and disability, but the life insurance is this would dictate who gets your benefit. It's a single form. This is a copy of the front and the back of the page. Um, so 
it's important to keep these updated just in case something were to happen. You want to make sure that your monies are going to the appropriate beneficiary. Um, the next page is just an example of the disability claim forms. I won't go into a lot of detail, but this is an example of if you are applying for sick and disability, this is what we would send to you. You would then provide this to your doctor and they would complete and send the forms back. Um, there's also a W-4 in there, the same thing as the paid time off. We need a W-4 return to issue those checks for sick and disability. Um, your medical benefits do not include vision or dental, but there is a voluntary dental plan. Um, the cost being $99.45 a quarter, so a touch under $400 a year for a single person. Uh, family coverage is at $259 per quarter, so a touch over $1,000 for the, for the year. Um, it's completely voluntary. You, some members choose to pick it up, others choose not to. But we send this out each year. If you do want the voluntary dental plan, you would just need to fill out the paperwork, and then we would send you quarterly st statements for your self-pays. Um, the next page details coverage under the dental plan. There are three classes, as you can see, and each of these, this details how they reimburse. Um, you should, when you're considering to pick up or not pick up the plan, each class has a time limit. So as you can see at the bottom of the page, a class three means that you have to be on the plan for 12 months before those services are covered. So, and that's consecutive months. So you would need to be, for example, orthodontics, you would need to be on the plan for 24 months to qualify for those services. The next page is an example of what your statements will look like. These will come from, all, from the fund office. We mail them out monthly and they will detail what your balances are as well as your contributions. So this is an example of a family coverage under the low plan. As you can see, family coverage, the split is 90% HCA, 10% WRA. If you go to the middle of the page, this is going to list your employer's name, the hours that were submitted on your behalf, as well as your welfare contribution, and your dues and annuity are listed on here as well. So your annuity is the money that will be going to Newport, and your dues goes to the union. Um, in this example, your welfare amount was 189 hours, $2,012. There is an admin fee that comes off and it's detailed on the left side of the page. So the admin fee is currently at 7%. Board of Trustees determine what that is each year. Generally, it's it's been at 7% for quite a few years. Um, so $2,012, 7% is the 140 would come out leaving you $1,871. That is going to split between your health care side, which is on the left side of the form, and your wage, which is on the right side. So as you can see, that split breaks into $1,684 to health care and $187 to the wage. And if you follow, you have a beginning balance, money going in. This individual has family low plan coverage. Cost of benefits at a th $1,169. So you can see as that comes in and the notice is letting you know you're eligible. Um, you can always call the fund office and we can explain in more detail, but this is just an example of what your statement's going to look like. Behind that, we added a few more examples. Um, I won't go into specifics, but you can see the next page is the high plan member child. 80-20 is the split. We're not up to that page yet, but um, yeah, so that's the member child, 80-20 split. And the same thing, you can follow as your hours come in, the amount of welfare and the splits of those dollars. Um, the next page is just an example of a member only 50-50 split. Same thing, it details all your splits and where your monies are going. And then the next page is an example of a member who chose to opt out. Um, as you can see, this is the 20% to healthcare, 80% to WRA split. And same thing, you can follow how the numbers go through with your splits and where your monies go. Finally, the last one 
of an example is a self-pay example. So if you are short on money, meaning you don't have the thousand dollar minimum and enough contributions coming in, you will be offered a self-pay. If you choose to make that payment, you'll have coverage for the following month. It's not necessary. If you choose not to pay, you just will not have coverage and your balances will stay the same. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is your work that you're doing in a current month is for future eligibility. So in this example, this is for work that was done in July. Your employer reports that to us at CDS the following month. So in September and I'm sorry, July work, August, it's reported to us. We would send you a statement in September notifying you of coverage for October. So the work that you're doing now actually impacts eligibility down the road, and that just rolls month to month. Um, that is, that's everything with the welfare side. As I said, it, it may seem slightly confusing, but you can always call the fund office. We'll review details and go over everything with you. When you receive your enrollment packet, whether it's at the enrollment period in November, or if you're a newer member and just joining the union, you can always call us and we can walk you through the process. The next form is an example of your distribution form for your annuity, bank, annuity fund. This would be if you were choosing to take a distribution. In order to take a distribution, if you're an active member, you need six months without contributions in order to close your account out. Um, if, you're current, if you're working, these monies need to stay in your account. It's only if you have six months without work. Whether you've left the union or whether you are just not currently working, you need to have that six months before you could close out the account. I won't go through all the specifics. There's directions in here as well, but same thing. You can always call the fund office and we can help walk you through the process. Um, there is an option for your annuity for a financial hardship. Those are very limited and they're dictated by the IRS, but basically the things that you could apply for a hardship reimbursement um, are non-reimbursable medical expenses, tuition fees, that includes room and board for secondary education for yourself and or any of your dependents. If you're purchasing your principal residence, eviction and or foreclosure on your home, if you're renting and or own your home. If you're being foreclosed or evicted, you could qualify for that. Um, repair of casualty damage. These would be things such as flooding, storm damage, earthquake, fire, things of that nature. And then also funeral expenses for, um, for a family member. We do need to have documentation on all of these items. Um, and you're only able to apply for up to that dollar. Um, so once again, these are the forms you would complete if you have questions or, or um, are looking to take that. Calling the fund office, we can walk you through the forms and explain everything in more detail. Um, Nancy, if you can, you're already to the beneficiary form. So this form is your annuity beneficiary form. We reviewed the welfare one. That's for your welfare money. You also want to make sure your annuity beneficiary is up to date. You want to make sure that if something were to happen to you, the correct beneficiary receives your annuity monies. Um, you can list multiple beneficiaries on here. And um, as I said, this should be updated. If you're a new member, you want to make sure to return it. If you get married or get divorced, things of that nature, you probably want to update your form by set, requesting and sending another one in. And that's all I had unless one of us to go through these specifics. He's going to ask questions and you're going to... So I have a... Right here I have a generally asked questions about healthcare. Um, so uh, there's 12 of them. Uh, we had some members send them in as well as what we as business agents um, come across. So uh, even though you already went over some of the stuff, we're still going to ask these questions. Sounds good. All right, if I already have health care, why do I have to pay for health care? Can you clarify that for us? Yeah, so if you do have health care coverage, and this would be through your spouse, it needs to be a group plan, but 
you could choose to opt out of the benefits through DC 57. And that would be by completing that opt out form that we reviewed. And you do need to do that each year. Like I said, we will send you an enrollment packet each year. You would complete that option for the opt out and send that form back. And then we would not take any monies out of your account for medical insurance. And the next question, how long before I will be able to receive benefits? That's a generally asked question that we get a lot of times. Right. So, so once you start in the plan, you first need to build up $1,000 in that health care account. Once that $1,000 has been built up, then your splits will, will begin. So in the example of a member family, that's 90% of your welfare money goes to your health care and 10% to your wage. Um, so once you hit that 1000 your kind of contributions at that point will start with the splits and then your monthly premiums will come out of your account to cover that. So generally from the time that you first start working, it's usually the third or fourth month is when you would have enough to start receiving coverage. All right. The next question we get is if I receive my package and choose to join the plan and have a baby on the way, how far back will my insurance cover the pregnancy? So there's no waiting period for the pregnancy. Um, you would you would need to have your spouse um, enrolled in the plan, and that would be under the member spouse benefit. Once the child's born, you would just contact us to notify us. We would eventually need a birth certificate sent in, but we would add your child to the coverage, and you would move from member spouse to the member family group. The next is, if I get married in the, in the middle of the year, are there exceptions for the time I can add my wife to the insurance plan, or do I need to wait to the beginning of the following year? So you don't need to wait to the beginning of the following year. Um, ideally, you would want to add your spouse as soon as you get married. We would need a copy of the marriage certificate, and generally, we need to have that notification 30 days after the marriage. Um, if you don't enroll your spouse within those 30 days, then yes, you would need to wait till the enrollment period of the for the next year. All right. And can I add stepchildren to the plan? Yes, as long as we have the information needed. So birth certificates um, would be needed for those stepchildren. But yes, they can be added to the plan. And then uh, you didn't answer this already, but do we get dental and eye coverage? Yeah, under your, your welfare benefit from your HCA account, there is no dental or vision coverage. There, <clears throat> there is the voluntary dental plan, as I reviewed, that all members are eligible to sign up for yearly. Um, the other thing, though, is you are able to submit medical, medical reimbursements for dental as well as vision services, and that would be monies that come out of your health care side, and you would be reimbursed for any expense out of pocket. Um, the next question, does our insurance card list the deductible amounts? They do not list what your deductible amounts are for the year. They will be listing, and there's newer cards that are going to be going out um, that will list what your deductibles are, whether you're on the high or the low plan. But it doesn't give you a running total of your deductibles. It does list your co-pays, and it does list the expenses for things such as specialty services and doctor's visits and things of that nature. You also can always call. There's a number on your card, whether you're on UPMC or Highmark, whichever you choose, and they'll be able to give you detailed information uh, as to what your benefits are. All right. The next question is, what type of receipt do I need for reimbursement? Um, the receipts, it does need to be an itemized receipt. So it, it can't just say a payment of X dollars. It needs to be itemized, detail what services were rendered. Uh, it needs to list the provider's name. So the doctor or the dentist or the vision provider. Um, it also must be paid by yourself, the member, and those receipts must show that you've paid the services for us to reimburse. And then uh, the next question is, how much money do I need in my WRA account to receive a check? So $200 is the net payment of check per day that the member will receive. You need approximately $325 to $340 to cover the taxes. So that additional amount over the $200 is to cover the taxes. Um, 
as I said, it varies depending on your location. So some localities have, such as city of Pittsburgh, it's 3%. Some of the boroughs outside, it's only 1%. So it does vary depending on your location, um, but generally 325 to 340 will provide you one day at $200. All right, the next question, number 10, what do I do if my benefits are wrong on my statement? So if you're noticing anything that's that's not how you enrolled or something looks incorrect, um, you will just wanna call CDS at the fund office and speak with one of our representatives. We will look into the issues and get anything corrected if it's not correct on the statement. All right, the next one, if I do not pay my benefits for a month, am I able to catch up the following month and receive health care. So this would just be for self pays. And once you're on the self pay plan, and, and that would be if you don't work enough hours to provide coverage, or if you're laid off or not working, um, you, you can not go month, you can't choose which months to pay, you would need to consecutively pay months um, to maintain the coverage. If you let your coverage elapse by not making that self payment, you would need to come back to work before you'd be eligible to make a self-payment again in the future. All right. And the last one, what if I receive my statement late and want to pay benefits but did not know I needed to, will you accept the late payment? Yes, late payments are accepted within reason. Oftentimes mail is delivered. Sometimes your employer is delinquent or a bit late on sending the contributions. So within reason, yes, we, we will take a late payment. Um, you know, a few days a week, what we cannot take is a payment two months after the fact or three months after the fact. So uh, we understand things do happen and there are some exceptions that can be made. Um, if you realize that, once again, calling the fund office and we can help walk you through what you need to do. Yeah, I think that's all I have unless we have any questions that were coming through from uh, any of the members that have been watching. Was there an option for questions? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think we're good. Thanks, Jeff. What is the phone number to call for you guys? Is someone here uh, commented? Um, yes, I believe if, if you look on your enrollment forms, and we have it plastered everywhere, but if, if you'd like to write it down, the fund office number is 866-487-2. 2857. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we are going to have Andrew, and he's going to discuss uh, our due structure. So, uh, again, anybody who is watching this at a later date, this will be on our website as well. If you have any questions, always reach out to your business rep as you should anytime you're laid off. Um, and have any other questions. Andrew? No, I was going to do it. All right, so we're going to talk about our due structure and breakdown, which is commonly asked. Um, if you go to the next slide, Steve. All right, so we have a thing called per capita or quarterly dues. And per capita dues are paid on a quarterly basis. Uh, the dues are paid to the district council, and the district council then pays them to the international. So when you write a check out for your quarterly dues, even though you're putting district council 57 on the check, it's, it's fine. Um, it is not paid um, to us. We then have to pay international. It's fine. It just looks like that on the screen. All right. Per capita dues are also known as quarterly dues. And there are three options to pay quarterly dues. So we have one option is you pay uh, per quarter at $114. The option two is to pay for the whole entire year is $456. And the option three is a discount option. If you pay the whole year before March 31st, you get a free month's due. So it will come to 418. All right, and continue with quarterly dues. So the bylaws actually call for the dues to be paid by the 20th of the end of each quarter. All right, dues must be paid before the last day of each quarter or you may be suspended or dropped. 
Uh, we do not do our suspension list here. That is done by the international when they drop you or suspend you. All right. After six months of non-dues payment, you will be dropped of a member of District Council 57. And um, if you were to pay by a check, you need to make the checks payable to District Council 57. Or you can call Mary Jean at this number right here, which is 412-276-5758. It'll also be put in the chat. Um, and you can pay by credit card. All right. It is the member's responsibility to keep track of your dues and when they are due. A lot of people will call in and say, I didn't get a reminder to pay my dues. We do not send reminders. We do, however, do blast texts um, to help save you guys money um, because postage is expensive. We do send a blast text. So make sure you guys are enrolled in receiving blast texts. All right. And utilize the mobile member app to keep track of your dues. You're able to go on a smartphone and type in mobile member portal. Um, you're able to download that app and it will have your dues of when you're paid and when they're due. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that we do not accept cash. So it's either by credit card or by check. Money. Or money order. We also do money orders. All right, next slide. All right, then we have another uh, part of our due structure, which is called checkoff dues. Uh, they're deducted from your gross wage. Your employer deducts these automatically. They're then sent to uh, CDS um, and then distributed for us. And this is how our fund, these are the funds that operate the district council uh, here at home. These funds stay here at the district council. Um, they're also assessed at 4.5% of your gross wage. Um, and you can see those on your statement from CDS where it says dues. You'll see the total amount there. They do not. Those do not cover your window dues. Those do not cover your windows dues or your quarterly dues. Those are separate. Just to remind you that they are not, um, they are two separate. Your checkoff and your quarterly dues are two separate dues payments. All right, that's all I got. Okay, stick around. We are going to start with our Spanish. Uh, we do have Dennis. Dennis will take over for a Spanish version. It's going to be for uh, Newport first. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dennis. I will be translating in Spanish. Yeah, uh, can I get the clicker to click it up? The battery's Oh. So, um, okay. we'll, we'll do it on here. I'm just, I'm going to go through uh, the slides, but uh, when it gets to the website portion, I'm just going to leave it up to them because it's, it's all in English and they can uh, reach out to New Group for assistance. Okay. If you just point over, it will change your slide. Okay. okay. Este es el fondo de, de, de la Navidad de la Unión. Esto es el fondo de la anualidad de la Unión. Un momento. Toma tu tiempo. Me pagan por la hora. <laughs> Ok, la agenda, plan de detalles, opciones de invertir, acceso a tu, a tu account y después preguntas. Ok, ¿quién es Newport? Newport tiene 35 años de experiencia, tienen más de 1.5 millones de, de personas participando en el programa, 26 oficinas nacional, 150 millones de dinero retirado debajo de la administración. Next one. Información del plan. Ok. La anualidad y plan de ahorro es un beneficio en que la unión participa. 
dinero sería contribuido en acuerdo con el plan de regateo. El primer paso de planeando y ahorrando para su retiro es ahorrar. La cosa buena de, de estar en la unión es que el primer paso ya está hecho para usted. Información del plan. El próximo paso es asegurando que su dinero está invertido en la manera más apropiada para usted. Hoy día vamos a hablar de sus estrategias de invertir, opciones de invertir en el plan y las buenas herramientas y los recursos disponibles para usted con Newport. Next, please. Opciones de invertir. Ok. Los expertos dicen que la diversificación de sus inversiones con la asignación de activos es el mejor partido de su riesgo. No pongan todos sus huevos en la misma canasta. Next. Aquí tenemos dos, dos tipos de, de opciones de estrategias. Next. Ok. Usted puede escoger su estrategia de invertir, que se llama Hands On. Usted mismo lo coge. El otro es Hands Off. O tiene la opción de invertir en un fondo diversificado en acuerdo con su tolerancia de riesgo. Next. Escoge tu, tu inversiones. Si tú, uh, si tú, si usted tiene el tiempo de chequear sus inversiones y si, y si se siente confortable con los conceptos de invertir y comprende los ciclos y condiciones, entonces pueden escoger sus propias inversiones. Next. ¿Por qué asignación de activos? Next. Clases de activo a veces trabajan diferente y cargan diferente riesgo. Clases de activo que pierden dinero a veces no afecta mucho porque los otros activos están haciendo dinero en el mismo ciclo. La correcta mezcla de activos ayuda a bajar el riesgo, perdón, el riesgo en los tiempos volatiles. Usted puede coger su propia mezcla, usted está en control siempre y puede... Usted puede poner cuánto dinero quiere, quiere guardar en la cuenta. Next. Aquí, aquí tenemos las opciones de, de las compañías que uno puede invertir. Estos son los más moderate, se llaman los más suaves, y aquí vienen los agresivos. Y estos son, me llaman, uh, estos son uh, los fondos automáticos también. Tienen que coger esa lista. Ok, next. Ok. Uh, con asignación estratégica de activos, usted ya no tiene que adivinar en armando su portafolio. Tienen el beneficio de tener un portafolio diversificado hecho para sus inversiones y tolerancia de riesgo. Next, please. American Century Fondos de Asignación Estratégica. El fondo de asignación estratégica oferta la manera más fácil para mezclar activos, no importa su edad, ingreso o experiencia de inversión. El fondo tiene un equipo de expertos que manejan su, oh, perdón, que manejan el portafolio. Asignación estratégica, conservativo, moderado o agresivo. Estos porcentajes cambian de bajo, cambian de bajo de poco tiempo, dependiente en las condiciones del mercado. Next. Next. Y aquí está el website de Newport. Aquí está la página donde le enseña, le, le da las instrucciones, pero está en inglés. So, si tienen unos problemas o una ayuda, o necesitan ayuda, perdón. Pueden, a, pueden ir al New Group a, a llamar a ellos para ayudarlo o a nosotros también. Yo les puedo ayudar a guiar un poco por la, por la página, porque yo tampoco no sé mucho de, de, de la página de Newport. That's it. For an import. Yeah. This will be available on the website for Spanish version of that. It will be available in Spanish? Yeah. I wonder. But okay, so esta versión que están viendo toda esta página van a estar en español también. Debajo de la página de, de New Group. Okay. Okay. Who? 
la próxima que va a hablar es la señora Alex y ella pertenece a CDS. Algunas preguntas, por favor, uh, pon ahí y yo le ayudo a, con las preguntas. Gracias. So Alex is going to going to uh, review the, the same benefits that I had reviewed of your plan um, in Spanish. So um, this is Alex. She works at CDS as well, and um, she's going to review this. Hola, buen día. Mi nombre es Alejandra. Um, okay. Um, esta es la página que le explica el open enrollment o el tiempo que puede hacer cambios a su plan médico. Um, tiene que rellenar el formulario en noviembre para el 30 de noviembre. Si no llena el nuevo form formulario, se queda en un plan que estaba antes. Um, estas son sus opciones médicas. Um, hay cuatro planes que puede elegir. ¿eh? Está el Highmark High Plan, que sería el plan alto. El Highmark Low, que es el plan bajo, UPMC alto y UPMC bajo. Um, la diferencia sería que la cantidad es más alta para el Highmark High Plan, um, pero paga menos fuera de su bolsillo. Los deducibles y los copagos son menos para el plan alto que el plan bajo. Um, estos son los... Um, las, uh, los dependientes en el plan um, pueden elegir de miembro solo o miembro con esposa o esposo, miembro con hijos o miembro con su familia. Estas son las um, la manera de fondo de salud. Um, en la, la porción en el medio tiene las cantidades que se separan los fondos que vienen en la cuenta. Para miembro, on, para miembro solo, sería 50% del dinero va en su fondo de salud y 50% va en los fondos de vacaciones. Um, si tiene un esposo o esposa en el plan, 80% va en el fondo de salud y 20% va en el fondo de vacaciones. Si tiene miembro con hijos, sería 80 y 20%. Y si tiene toda la familia, si es miembro, esposo, esposa y um, hijos, eh, la separación sería 90% en el fondo de salud y 10% en el fondo de vacaciones. Y si elige el último, que sería opt-out o rechazar el seguro, tendría 20% que va en el fondo de salud y 80% en el fondo de vacaciones. Um, esta página le explica... Um, ¿Cuántos son los, las, uh, la prima de seguro por mes? Um, si elige el primero, sería miembro con um, la familia, el plan alto, la cantidad por mes son 1,403. Y después todas las cantidades siguen. También um, tiene, um, hay un um, reembolso médico donde puede aplicar para... Um, cantidades que pagó fuera de su bolsillo y el próximo dice es el wage account, es el fondo de vacaciones. Si tiene cobertura activa, um, está elegible para accidente o enfermedad. Las cantidades están en las cajitas ahí donde dice benefit y coverage. Este es la, el enrollment form o el formulario que tiene que llenar para elegir el plan que quiere. En uh, la parte de arriba solamente ponen su nombre, su información y puede elegir el plan alto, el high, el low um, o para aplicar y después en la parte de abajo tiene que firmar y poner el día. Esta página es para opting out um, o si quiere rechazar el seguro. Hay una porción donde dice proof of other coverage que tiene que poner la información si va a estar en el seguro de su esposa o esposo. Esta forma es um, el reembolso médico 
donde puede aplicar para um, dinero que pagó fuera de su bolsillo. Sería un copago, un deducible, um, si pagó para visión, dental, cosas así. La parte de arriba tiene que llenar su información. Um, en el medio tiene que llenar el proveedor de servicio, el día de servicio, la cantidad. Necesitamos una firma y también tiene que mandar recibos um, con esta forma para poder estar aprobado. La próxima forma es la forma de vacaciones, uh, donde puede pedir de ese fondo de vacaciones. Um, puede recibir hasta 75 días por año. Um, y la cantidad serían 200 dólares por día. Tiene que firmar la parte de abajo. Y la próxima página es el W4 que necesitamos con esta forma para poder sacar las tasas. Um, esta forma es el beneficiario uh, para el seguro de vida. Um, esta es la aplicación para accidente o enfermedad. Hay una porción donde tiene que firmar usted y una porción donde tiene que firmar su doctor um, para que le puedan pagar. ¿Qué es el accidente? ¿Qué es el pago por semana? 325. Serían 325 dólares por semana. Si está aprobado. Uh, lo máximo que puede recibir serían 13 semanas. Um, este es el plan dental que es voluntario. Um, y acá le explica las cantidades que tendría que pagar para el quarter, um, para persona única serían 99,45 y para la familia son 259,23. Y la próxima página le explica lo que todos los diferentes um, servicios y cuánto paga. Este es un ejemplo de su statement que le mandamos todos los meses. Um, que le explica cuál plan está en, cuáles son las horas que recibimos de su empleado, el mes, um, el dinero que mandaron y um, le, el, um, el fee de administración. Y le explica también si está cubierto. En la parte de abajo te dice, you are covered for this benefit period. Quiere decir que tiene cobertura para este periodo de beneficios. Uh, la primera es para familia, el segundo sería si está en el high plan con miembros, con hijos, más o menos lo mismo. Uh, después el próximo sería miembro solo y también le da el porcentaje que sería 50-50. Um, este es el si está operado o rechazó el seguro. Y el último, le explica si en la parte de abajo dice total payment due for eligibility, es la cantidad que tiene que pagar ese mes para tener cobertura. Um, estos son los formularios para aplicar para la anualidad y son un montón de páginas. Um, esta... Y la última es uh, la aplicación para el beneficiario para la anualidad um, que tiene que firmar con la información. Um, sí, para tener la información. ¿Ok? Bueno, eso es todo. Alrighty. Thank you much, Alex. Okay. Aquí está la estructura de, de las cuotas. la estructura de las cuotas. Uh, this is the first page. 
Las cuotas per cápita son pagadas cada trimestre. Las, las cuotas, cuotas perdón, per cápita son pagadas al Consejo de Distrito y después el Consejo de Distrito paga a la Internacional. Hay tres opciones de pagar su, su cuotas cada trimestre. La opción, primera opción es 114 cada, cada trimestre. La segunda opción 40, es, perdón, son 456 dólares por año. La tercera opción, te descuentan un mes, sale 418 por año. Si lo pagas antes del 31 de marzo. Next, please. Ok. Las leyes de la, de la Unión dicen que las, cuet, las cuotas estarán pagadas por el, por el día 20 al final de, de cada trimestre. Los cuotas tienen que estar pagados antes del último día del trimestre si no pueden estar suspendidos. Después de seis meses de no pagar las los cuotas, cuotas, usted ya no es considerado miembro del Consejo de Distrito 57. Ustedes pueden llamar a Mary Jane, a ese número ahí, y pagar por tarjeta de crédito. O también pueden escribir un cheque y hacer el cheque pagado a distrito de consejo 57 o de su caso que te saben como lo ves y lo pueden mandar a la oficina. Esa es la responsabilidad del miembro que, están a, que estén atentos de las cuotas y que paguen cuando es el tiempo. Usen la aplicación en su teléfono para ver su pago de, de cuotas. Nosotros no aceptamos efectivo. Next, please. Check off cuotas son, son deducidos de su salario bruto. Tu empleador le saca automáticamente. Estos fondos hacen funcionar al Consejo de Distrito 57. Están juzgados a 4.5% de su salario bruto. Y acuérdense que esto no, este pago es no es para sus cuentas que uno va pagando cada trimestre. Es diferente y lo sacan automáticamente de su, de su sueldo. Okay. ¿Algunas preguntas? Por favor, pongan ahí en la computadora. Ok, bueno, eso ya ha concluido la, la presentación. Si ustedes tienen unas preguntas, por favor llamen o pueden uh, poner ahí en la computadora. Y acuerden si si están laid off, no están trabajando, que hablen con su representante de negocio, por favor, inmediatamente, para poner en la lista de, de trabajar. ¿Ok? Gracias. ¿De dónde salen los días de vacaciones de pago? Um, dice, ¿de dónde salen los días de vacaciones de pago? ¿De dónde salen los días de vacaciones de pago? Um, serían del fondo de vacaciones. Salen del fondo de vacaciones. ¿Dónde viene el dinero de la vacación? It comes from the welfare account. Sí, sale de la cuenta de vacaciones. I think you have to type that. What about the final day annuals? Put that will answer the chat. Perdón, estamos chequeando la pregunta que están entrando por la computadora. What means the final de años? Are you answering it on there? Mm -hmm. La señora Alex está, está poniendo la respuesta en la computadora. Um, 
I can always have Dennis call. Mm -hmm. Tell him to. Jeff, what are the ways to explain the vacation fund? Does that mean they're asking where the vacation fund comes from, the, the money um, for the vacation? Tell them it's a WRA account. So, yeah, it comes from. I said the fund of vacations, but. Um, what else do you elaborate? It, it comes from the statements. So, if they review their statement, they'll see the total hours that come in, and then those hours are split to healthcare side and wage account side. Wage account is the vacation. But depending on what plan you're in, if you are a member family, it's 90% to the health care, 10% to the wage account, which would be your WRA. Okay, I said if you look at your statement of hours, then you will be able to see how much you have in the fund, in the vacation fund. The right side of the statement details your WRA account, and that is your paid time off vacation. Yeah, tell me to call the WRA account. Oh, yeah. WRA. Uh, yo tengo 16 días de vacaciones. Dicen que me enviaron un cheque de 15 de noviembre. ¿De dónde salen esos 16 días? Yo tengo 16 días. 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 Um, they're telling me that they're going to send me a check on the 15th of November. Where does that, where do those 16 days come from? I'm explaining this one just comes from the point of the WRA. It is called the WRA account, no vacation, it's WRA account. That's where the money comes from. Okay. La cuenta que están hablando no se llama cuenta de vacaciones, se llama WRA, Wage Reimbursement Account. De ahí sale su dinero de vacaciones. I'm selling payments we call it vacation. Okay, gracias. Okay. Gracias y ya se concluye la presentación. Tengo buen día.